believe in church. Amen. I'd like to welcome you to the Blue Light Fellowship evening service. Anyone uh, enjoy the morning service? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we didn't just give him a black eye, we split his head wide open. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely good. All right. Uh, so uh, anyway, our our uh, Thanksgiving dinner is coming up it's on the twenty first. Be after the morning services on the twenty first, if I remember what I read. And so check out the uh, sign up sheets uh, in the foyer. It's on the bulletin board. There it is in the middle of the screen there. Got that <coughs> at the bottom. I'm sorry, at the bottom. All right. Uh, I just want to remind everybody, too, uh, nobody's ever said anything as of yet, but uh, if you want to know what's going on and what the announcements are, because I'm trying not to do so many of them, because they are printed. Yes, they are. So uh, they're on the back wall. Yes, they they're are. on the website. Yeah, I keep telling and, <laughs> we got it. And we got that. About 15 minutes early is what I'm getting to. <laughs> Want some chocolate? I'm still here. <laughs> I ain't got that salty taste out yet. <laughs> there won't be stick in the bag. No, this is... <laughs> anyway, let's uh, let's go to our Papa Father. Amen. You know, Jesus, <laughs> just do that. your best to pretend like she's not standing here right now. It's not possible. I will make it very difficult. <laughs> Jesus called his father in heaven. He called his father in heaven. Because it uh -huh. is it is a biblical term. Uh -huh. I'm trying to do as Jesus does. That's, yes. Yes. That's all I'm doing. Amen. Amen. Abba Father. Abba Father, once again, we just want to thank you and praise you for this evening. Yes. Father, thank you so yes. much that we have a place to come to worship you uh -huh. in spirit and in truth. Yes. Father, I thank you for the word that's going to come forth, what we're going to learn tonight. Yes. I pray that every heart is ready to receive and hear and understand and help us to retain what we do uh, understand this evening, that we can take this out to a world that, yes. that just has a very dim view of what your word says. But they need to know that your amazing love, your amazing grace yes. is is what they, they actually yes. need you, Lord Jesus. We've learned that, and we need to take yes. that to the world. Help us to do so after tonight and every time that we meet. By the works of the enemy, I render them useless and powerless. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come and dwell with us this evening as we worship you. And I, I thank you for the hedge of protection around those that are coming that will be here in just a few minutes. Father God, I thank you that you're going to see that they get here safely. Those that cannot be here, Father God, need a healing in their body. I ask that your healing virtue go to them. Yes. Go to them and heal them. Heal. Bring them back safe and healed. Yes. If they can give give a, a, an encouraging word to many others of what you have done for them. Yes. And as always, we give you the honor, the glory, and certainly all of the praise all in the praise. mighty, mighty name of Jesus, whom we love, and we declare it by saying, Amen. 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 It makes me so glad that we can just gather together and give everything we have to him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's continue to stay like we did in the morning. Give it all to him. And focus on him, all your problems start to disappear. Bring your 
your tired of it, bring your shame. Bring your guilt, bring your pain. Don't you know it's not your name? You will always be much more to me. Every day I guess with the voice that you tell me I'm not alright. That's alright, cause I hear a voice and he calls me to me. You know the same I'll never be enough. And greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world. I 
We can't fake it. It just won't happen if you just fake it and go through the motions. Amen. We are hurting and dying here. Families around us. We have it so good here in America. A lot of us do struggle a lot. But there are people out there in other countries that are desperately crying to reach out to the Lord. That are dying for just having a single page of the Bible in their house. Our time here on earth is short. Compared to eternity, where do we want to spend that? Yes. Nothing here matters. When we're gone, this life will be forgotten. Thank you, Father God, for being here for us. For your sacrifice. For the blood that covers our sins. From the very beginning of time, and even before then, you had this planned out. Oh, hallelujah. Father God, we give you all honor, glory, and praise. It is due to you. None of us can accept it. Because anything that we do good here, it's through you and the Holy Spirit that strengthens us. Hallelujah. Help humble ourselves, Father God. Help us stay away from self and sin. Bow down before you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Come on, church, let's give him some praise up in his house. Oh, my goodness. Appreciate you. I believe we have a chat open, so if you need any prayer requests or have any questions, somebody's going to be monitoring that. Feel free to type it in. Amen. Amen. Uh, before we get started tonight, a couple things. Uh, apparently now, I am known as the pastor that leaves you hanging. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, in comparison, somebody saying. You know, we want all this stuff in the world, and a man's got more guns in a small third world country. But I was corrected today when I went to rebuke him. He said, no, those are investments. They're not toys. I said, oh, okay, okay, okay. Second of all, uh, on a more serious note, we, uh, uh, my wife and I, Julie, uh, we uh, managed to secure 30 copies of the study guide for this particular lesson that we're on. Um, and this is how gracious the, the publisher slash author was. Normally, and you can even look it up, you can look it up on Amazon later. Normally they run twenty dollars each. They're 190 pages. However, the publisher said instead of charging 20 bucks to the holidays, if you would take up a love offering, I'll take whatever you can you can get. Yeah. So they will be here next Sunday night. So it doesn't matter if it's a dollar, if it's twenty bucks, if it's a hundred. It whatever God leads you to give yeah. towards this, yeah. we'll make sure it gets passed along. Yeah. But I promise you, it'll be a worthwhile yeah. offering because, yeah. as you're going to see as we continue to go on, it is packed full yes. of information. Yes. Okay, yeah. are we good with that? Yeah. All right. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I looked up the word wrestle. Uh, it refers to warfare in general between saints and spirit rebels who are against God. Does that not describe what we're talking about, right? We are at war, and all we're trying to do with this is to get equipped so that we can do battle. Remember, there's a, of the armor of God, only one piece is for, is for offensive purposes, right? And that's the word. Everything else is for defensive purposes, okay? But we've got to know our enemy. If we don't know our enemy, 
We don't know how to defeat him. Correct? Come on, man. That's why you got to know your enemy, because as I said, Come on. Come on. he knows us very well. He knows yes. what buttons to push. Yep. He knows yep. what to do just to get underneath our skin. And he's going to do it time after time after time until we learn to say, not today, Satan, it's not going to work. That won't work anymore. Now, he's not going to whimper and run away. If not, if he does, it won't be for very long because then he's going to return. He's going to find some other button that, that yeah. he can push that's going to just yeah. boil you, right? Yeah. He does it all the time, every day. Yeah. So we need to know about it. Amen? Amen. This technology is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Curious Avail did an illustration one time for the armor of God. He had on the armor of God, and then he turned around and he had all these arrows stuck in. Because there's no, no, no protection on your backside. You don't turn yeah. your back on the devil. That's right. Come on. Yeah. 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 And we shouldn't turn our back on him. Yeah. You know, he seems to forget who our father is. Mm -hmm. All right, we got a technology glitch here, guys. What's going on? It's because you gave glory to the technology and said it was awesome. Oh, well, I did. <laughs> well, so. Uh, it's the operator. It's not the operator. I promise you that. Yeah. Oh. It's the operator. Oh, so it wasn't the operator. I'll take those apologies now. Come on. Come on. I need to hear some repenting going on. So sorry, front operator. It's the back operator. But it was the operator. Are you in it now? It's the guy behind the curtain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think the remote's on. There's no way. The remote's not on. It's, Can, it's on. Can you hit the down arrow for me on the keyboard? Yeah. yeah. Oh. All right, go, go ahead. Oh, I want to see. That's strange. Sorry. Probably should I'll just progress it. You'll just progress it? Okay. Yeah. That's fine. All right, go to the next one. All right, so we left off here two weeks ago because last week we had the Hallelujah party, right? As Tessa keeps reminding me, she goes, you owe us two weeks worth of material. I just want. And then, and then she also uh, threatened to kidnap my wife if I didn't, if I kept leaving y'all hanging. And then Freddie said he almost didn't show up tonight. He goes, you know, you keep leaving me hanging. I thought about not coming tonight. You told me I could take it. I did. I did. I did. What did I say after that? About 25 minutes later, you'd be like, come get her. <laughs> Didn't I? <laughs> you, know, you do have to go home with me. I do have to go home, yes. <laughs> All right, so we, just to recap, we talked about the punishment um, for the sons of God, the fallen angels, you know, the ones that came down here to earth, and they, now, I want to clarify something we talked about two weeks ago when, when, the, when, the, when the text said, took them wives. It doesn't mean they grabbed a woman and went and got a preacher and said, we want to get hitched. That's not what it meant. It means they took them by force and they became their wife whether they wanted to or not. Wow. Amen? Amen? So those had, they had to watch their children drown in Noah's flood as their punishment for mating with human females. And they were helpless to stop it. Yep. Does that sound familiar? Uh -huh. God watched his own son die. But the only difference is he wasn't helpless to stop That's it. Right. He could stop it any time he yes, wanted he to. Yeah. Right? Next slide. All right, this is where we left off. We're going to see what unclean spirits set out to do to mankind. Because you know they're going to try to pay us back, right? Yeah. they got to get their own. they got to get their revenge. Next slide. All right, we're going to, we're going to go back to the book of Enoch real quick. It's out of chapter 15, verses 11 to 12. It says, and the spirits of the giants, listen, they afflict. They oppress, they destroy, they attack, they do battle, and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. Is that, is that, is that not an accurate yeah. description? Yeah. They take no food, but nevertheless they hunger and they thirst and they cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them. Okay, next slide. Now notice, those evil, unclean spirits, i.e. the spirits of the giants, what did I say the first thing they did was? They afflict. 
Afflict means to cause pain or suffering. Anybody been in pain or suffering lately? To knock about, anybody feel like they've been shaking like a rag doll, spiritually, emotionally? They harass, they weaken, they knock you down. That's what afflict means. Oppress. We know a lot about this, don't we? Unfortunately. Cause to feel distressed or anxious. To press against, to produce hardship. Nobody in this room or nobody watch online has ever had any hardship since they became born again, right? Mm. Okay, next. They also destroy. Let's get a little bit more serious now, right? Uh, to put out of existence by severe damage or attack to completely ruin or spoil. When I think about, when I see the word destroy, I think about someone who comes to Christ and then in a short amount of time, it's like they've gone into witness protection. You can't find them anywhere. They don't return phone calls. They don't return texts. They don't come to church. You know, they like disappeared. Yeah. Right? Something else they do is attack. They have to take aggressive action against somebody. To act harmfully on, criticize, or oppose fiercely and publicly. Also known as a sudden short bout of an illness. Hmm. Yes, they can attack you with illness. There's this little bug floating around for about the last 18 months. What's it called again? COVID-19. It gives you a, a, a sudden short bout of illness if, yes. if, if it comes upon you, correct? Okay, next. Battle. Huh. Lengthy, difficult struggle or contest. A lot of us have been in a battle with the enemy for years. Right? Years. It's also a battle of wits. Think about that. Satan tried to trick you. Right? He tries to trick you. How does he try to trick you? He will tell you something so close to the truth. Kind of like, did God really say you couldn't eat any of the fruit of the But what did Eve say? No! We can eat all any of the fruit except for that tree right there. God didn't tell you that. Go ahead and have a bite. Right? Destruction calls someone's ruin. Hmm. A lot of people out there in the world who are being destroyed, aren't they? A lot of people out in the world are 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 are, uh, are being afflicted or afflicted by destruction. They go from the highest to highest, to the lowest to the lowest, and a lot of times they don't recover. Amen. Next, trouble. The the the, the, the evil spirits cause trouble. Causing difficulty or problems, worry, inconvenience, punishment, blame, unrest, disorder, distress, pain, inconvenience. The whole world's an inconvenience right now. Right? right? That's right. Especially to Christians. And I hate to be the bearer of not so good news, but it's not going to get any easier. No. Not the way this world is going, not the way this country is going, right? Offenses to cause resentment or hurt, a breach of a law or a rule. It's something else that they do. Next. All of those that we just covered are aimed at mankind. Yes. Josh. It's like you said, it isn't going to get better. Even the Bible said it's not going to get better. Mm -hmm. And we need to prepare ourselves for the it's going to ramp up pretty quickly once once it hits. Yes. And uh so we need to start picking and choosing our battles. Stop focusing exactly. on the things that are like, oh, you know, I wish my life was better. I, you know, exactly. you got to prepare your field for the blessings that God is going to give you and the strength he's going to give you to get through the trials. Yeah. Do, do, do I look at my field, to use your terminology, and notice this half acre of rocky terrain, or do I focus on the three and a half or four and a half acres of good soil? Yes. I.e., do I focus on my troubles or do I focus on my blessings? Mm -hmm. Right? But anyway... Satan and unclean evil spirits, that's that what we just covered is their total purpose in life. That's how they're getting back at us, at mankind. Okay? Next. Enoch 16, 1 through 2. From, now listen to this. This is a good one. From the days of the slaughter and destruction and death of the giants. And we talked about the giants, right? By the way, I believe it is uh, Genesis 6, chapter 6. In those days, giants were on the earth. The Hebrew word for giants, and you're going to know this one, is Nephilim. Now, Nephilim, some people have taken it and gone way off course with that. Okay? I, I will admit that right here. 
Some people have taken that and created this, this whole ministry around Nephilim. Okay? All the Nephilim were, were the giants. They, they were the fallen angels. Okay? All right? That, that's it. That, that was just the Hebrew name for them. Okay? Anyway, from the souls of whose flesh the spirits, having gone forth, shall destroy without incurring judgment. Thus shall they destroy until the day of consummation. The great judgment in which the age shall be consummated over the watchers and the godless. We're going to talk about that next. So an unclean evil spirit, listen, is the spirit of the offspring of a giant or a nephilim, a giant, right, or a nephilim who mated with a human woman. That same giant or nephilim that was banished from heaven until the day of judgment, the fallen angel. Okay. Anytime you see giant or Nephilim, just think fallen angel. Okay. Now they've come forth to create havoc on earth, and I got to admit, unfortunately, they've done a pretty good job. Now we know the end, right? If you even briefly read the book of Revelation and only understand one tenth of it, you know what happens to all of them in the end, right? But it's the time between now and then that that, that, we're, that we need to be concerned about. Can't just say, oh well, I'm not going to do anything because I know we win in the end. That's not the case. What if Jesus would have done that? <laughs> right? And aren't we supposed to be like him? Yep. Didn't he create a, a did he give us a commission known as the Great Commission? Right? Yep. Okay, next. All right, Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, now remember, we're talking Genesis here, right? As the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. A lot of different interpretations of this scripture. I'm going to use one on the next slide. In the day of, as it was in the day of Noah, the giants were physically around. We know that. The Bible says so. In those days, there were giants. Right? But even though today we don't see them physically walking around. Right? They're in the spiritual realm. Amen? We don't have, I haven't seen any 14 foot men walking around. Anybody else? I might have seen them back in my party days, but that was, that was not using my physical nor my spiritual eyes. Okay? Next. But we do see the effects of their presence still today. They, you know, they may not be mating with women and producing offspring and stuff like that. But they're, what, what does the devil do? Seek, kill, destroy, right? Yeah. What do you think he has these, these evil, unclean spirits doing? Yeah. They seek, they kill, they destroy, right? They, as they roam the earth by all the destruction around us as it was in the day of Noah. Wow, is there not some destruction going on right now? If you don't believe me, look on the, on the church's Facebook page and read those posts from Agave. He, there was a, I don't know if y'all saw, there's a video of a two-way street, and half of the street was a river. It was gone. And there were cars driving down the other street, like, you know, everyday thing, right? But Jesus is coming, as we know, is going to bring destruction to, to wicked all over the globe. Amen? Right? Next. Y'all feel free to talk back. <laughs> Genesis 6.11, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Key in on that word violence, okay? Next. Today's headlines ring this truth, even if the news is fake. Do they not? There is violence going on all over. And most of it is, I'm going to say it's stupid. Yeah. Somebody will say something. And somebody will say, I don't agree with you. And the first person pulls out a gun and shoots them. Just because they disagreed with them. Well, look at the road rage. I mean, it's road crazy. rage, yes. It's crazy. Um, when I took my concealed carry class when it first started back in 96, I think it was, the instructor told us the story. Two guys up in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex driving down one of the many highway, interstate highways up there, I don't know, 635 or what, driving down a road, and a guy passed a guy, and when he moved over, he allegedly, or it was perceived that he moved over too quick and cut off the guy he passed. So the guy that got passed forced this guy off the road, drags him out of his car, and proceeds to pummel him with his fists. 
While the guy's laying there bleeding, the guy doing the beat says, you know what, this ain't good enough. I'm gonna, he literally tells the guy, I'm going to get a tire iron out of my truck and I'm going to finish you off. Goes and gets a tire iron, walks back. The guy had just got his concealed permit on the ground. Pulls his gun and shoots him twice in the chest and kills him dead. The dead man's family sued the victim. Because they said it wasn't an authorized use of deadly force in their, in their eyes. The guy was walking towards him with a tire iron, getting ready to bash in his head. Uh, he didn't, at that time, the suit hadn't been, there was no resolution yet, but the main purpose, of the, the point of the story was, you just don't know. I mean, you just don't know. Next. So if that's going on today. Genesis 6, 13, this is what God said to Noah. Imagine if God came to you and said this one day. The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Wow. That almost makes you want to go, are you talking to me? Yeah. I don't, I, do I want to hear this? You know? Next. Notice the word, go back one, the emphasis is on violence. Right? For the earth is filled with violence. Okay, go back. Or go forward one. Now we understand that these spirits of these banished entities are behind some of the things we witness today in our personal lives as well as the global scale. There is some sick things happening out there. Depraved things happening out there. Isn't there? Next. Y'all quiet tonight. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. We were watching a issue getting ready to come here. And they were talking about guns and it's like 60 minutes. And, you know, they're saying really all the added in is make it legal to have a bunch of killers basically. Mm -hmm. And I mean you think about it, what was it? Mexico just recently Cancun. Cancun. Mm -hmm. Two people shot each other. Come to find out they were both drug dealers. Yes. And they were selling and one got mad because like, hey, stay on your side of the street. Yeah. And they didn't do it. So they both pulled one gun and killed each other. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's like 10 years ago, you would have been shocked to have heard that. Yes. It, it would have been like, oh my God, really? Today, it's like, it's everyday thing. Yeah. And it really, I let both of my children, when they got out of high school, the school let them. Took them to Kingston. And so I let Stephen go. I wasn't worried about Stephen. Y'all again take care of himself. So when Dustin got ready to go, I freaked out because the kid can't speak Spanish at all. Stephen came. And so anyway, I was just scared to death of him. So stupid me, I can't spend a thousand dollars. In fact, I'm paying a thousand dollars for a month. I mean, really, it is today. Yeah. But I spent a thousand bucks to send Stephen back to Dustin, and he was supposed to be Dustin's bodyguard. <laughs> we come to find out, he's hanging out with all the chicks, getting drunk, having a grand time. <laughs> Dustin's in a cab at four o'clock in the morning, going to different bars. Why I don't know. But he comes home and tells me, "Oh no, Stephen was nowhere around." I mean, you know. And I'm thinking, thank you, God. <clears throat> It, I, I mean, I was so mad, I just wanted to grab that kid by the throat. I mean, y'all y'all see where my frustration comes from. I mean, I just wanted to. I'm, I'm trying to tell him, I paid for you to go there. I paid for every expense you would have. Like, you left with money in your pocket. So you could watch your brother and what you do. And sadly, I wouldn't dare let either one of them. I mean, you're both in your 40s, but I would throw a fit if they were... To even think of going to Cancun, and that's sad. Yeah. But after that, it's like now we're awake. Yeah. You know that was going on. I assure you, when they were there. Sure. By the grace of God, they didn't run into that. And, and the news never reported stuff like that because it was just two drug dealers. Who cares? Well, they, they found a, a boat 
it was a big boat like what we went on. And uh, they, they downstairs, they were having a big party. It was an after hours party. And they busted these people on the ship, and it was unbelievable mm -hmm. what, what they were doing. They were doing lines and smoking and drinking, and I mean, that's where the real party was. Yeah. You thought it was upstairs mm -hmm. at the bar, but it's the crew. it really wasn't. It was the crew. <laughs> it's the crew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking a lot about what Pastor Roger was talking about and, uh, this morning. Uh, for some reason, I can't remember the context, but I remember uh, thinking about like what Biden's doing and things in the background that people just aren't seeing and how actually really bad it is. He's, uh, I think the uh, governor of, I think it was Florida, but uh, they realized they were flying immigrants in on planes, like over 70 planes with a lot of immigrants, just illegal immigrants coming in. And they're uh, paying, paying them to... Uh, giving them housing and everything. And now that we're talking about paying each uh, immigrant family that I guess were separated at the border, like $450,000. Yeah, reparations. Reparations. For reparations. And we can't even take care of people in here in our own country. There's people struggling right now, even though they work, you know? It's not like I don't want the immigrants here, but uh, it's just going to cause an even bigger problem down the road. Agreed. Yeah. yeah, well, actually, it was about what California was doing about the whole shipping project. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's going to be, it's, to me, it seems like it's going to end up like Venezuela or some socialist country where they limit the supply chain and then people aren't going to get what they need. Yeah. Agreed. Yes, ma'am. I don't want to take you away from your, I'm trying to stay in your, uh, your message, but I was listening to John Hayden the other day. He said, you know, we're going to see this. Hopefully, we'll be raptured out of here mm -hmm. and not endure what's already in, in process. Yeah. They had the CEO of Kruger. I don't know if y'all know that's mm -hmm. what? Kroger's. Kroger's. Huge chain. Mm -hmm. That's a huge store. Anyway, he was saying we are running out of food right here in America. That's ridiculous. And he, I mean, they were asking questions, and he was like, and I mean, he's been at his job for over 30-something years, so you know you know what you're doing. And he was saying, no, we are running out of food in America. Mm -hmm. We're sending money to Africa, which is a good thing. Thank God we have those people. But he was saying it's a matter of time before we. And, and I mean, John Hagee said this, and it just really upset me when he did. He said, do you know that neighbor? Lives next door to you, been there 20 years, just loving to death. Hey, you walk know, home and somebody comes to their house, you watch the house mm -hmm. for them, and you know, you have a good relationship mm -hmm. with them. He said, Guess what? When they get hungry and there's no food, he said, They're going to come first and ask. And yep. yep. <laughs> and then they're going to come back and ask you then. When you find them, you have to stand up and say no. He said, You better be careful. I was thinking, well, that's not going to be, I mean, you know, he was saying this could happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We live like, well, that's years down the road. He said it isn't years down the road. When the CEO of a huge chain like that mm -hmm. tells us we're mm -hmm. running out of food, mm -hmm. we can't just sit back like John Hagee said. I mean, he's like, Y'all gotta do what y'all gotta do. We tell our people this is what he said. Put a month or two of food back. Mm -hmm. Go up your freezers. It'll be cheaper. If you, if you don't use it. It'll be cheaper when you need it. Yep. And he'll be there. And he said, We tell our church, you know, it's where it's like, ah, uh, I'm a, you know, yeah, but God takes care of me. I've had somebody in this church tell me. God takes care of me. He needs my needs. I'm not going to worry about it. And I'm like, but that is what? God taking care of me. You think about it because you know what? Had to prepare mm -hmm. for his part of God destroying this world. Yep. Correct? Yeah. Joseph had to, yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Moses had to do his part, did he not? Yes. 
So who are we? Then we're, you know, God's just going to come down here and he's just going to do it all over me, you know? I don't believe that. No. I, and I think anyone that does is sadly not so hard. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I hear you. You hear me? Yeah, but to, to prove her point, she, she's absolutely right. When I paired to a chick just a few days ago, I was going to get Brenda a large drink. The lady that answered the Anacom, she says, if you're ordering chicken or fish, there's a 10 minute wait. And all we have as far as cups are concerned is they, they had small cups. They were out of the large medium right up here mm -hmm. yeah. yep we uh we, we took twins to mcdonald's on the way here taking them home and they got happy meals and they loved when they yogurt yeah, they yogurt in the yeah. tube yeah. i'm sorry we're out yeah, of yogurt yeah. i'm sorry we're out largest restaurant chain on the planet out well, i think she was first okay sorry go ahead Go ahead, Dr. Pete, you got it. Well, I, I truly believe that we are living, living at one of the most uh, horrible times as far as even if I was the victim because of the deception. And I think that if, if a lot of us have been deceived since the time of deception and still being deceived because we look at the government system even now, yeah. believe me, it's not about us. I can't say that any more than I can. It's about the new world order. Yeah. That's People right. been preparing for this thing for years. Yes. They haven't just woke up yeah. in the beginning of 2021 and said, okay, yeah. right, this is the yeah. way that we're going to do this stuff. Yeah. No, they yeah. been doing stuff yeah. on the ground. You know, this yeah. thing is worldwide. Yes. So don't think that they're all for you. It's yeah. all a spirit deception. That's right. Yep. And, yeah. and, and yes, I am Pastor Joy. I, my friends, I got two friends now. Yeah. And I, it's wisdom. You know, and it's a time of signs, just like it was in Noah's yeah. time. You know, they weren't watching the time of signs. No. But the time is here. And we got to bear out that I'm going to put chicken, and even for dad, I'm married. Because now we know dad's I was $4. Yeah. In some places, it's $309. Mm -hmm. But we used to have $2 and something. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? When I drove to Mississippi, I paid more for my gas than I ever had on God knows when. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the prices is soaring. Do not think that, that this social agenda is for us. Come it's going to help us out, yeah. help us in medical, your yeah. finances. Yeah. No, it's no. not. No, they're not. It's for the build of the government system for control. Yeah. Yeah. So they can take control of the world. Yeah. And that's what they are. They're all in it together. Yep. Yes. That's true. Amen. They all are in it together. Mm -hmm. Don't be deceived. Don't be mocked, the Bible says. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. I'm not trying to spread fear, just yeah. trying to spread truth, you know, uh -huh. like, uh, just to go off of what <coughs> Beverly was talking about, uh, they're saying um, the prices of food are reaching record highs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not yeah. only that, the gas price, she's talking about $4 an hour, uh, $4 a gallon, yeah. um, there's places in California where it's almost $8 a gallon, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's, and then the, the truck drivers in the truck industry, they want to switch to electric, but like right now they need gas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How are they going to afford that? Right. Yeah, absolutely. But you're right, Dr. B. It, it's got to go this way. In yes. order for the Antichrist to come in and That's say, right. hey, I have an answer for all your problems, right. it has to go this it way. This is way. all, this has already been planned by God. God already knows what's fixing to happen. And we're in We're in the worst times right we're now. Worst times. We are. And People are not using wisdom. They are not. And that's why God is looking for his elect, his chosen people that are going to follow him. Yeah, going back on the wisdom thing, uh, you know, God makes a way for us. He doesn't hand us everything. That's right. right. Um, my grandmother saw the uh, the video for uh, my post and saw that I was open carrying in the video. And mm -hmm. uh, she made the comment because my brothers were talking to her. I was that she made the comment that oh, I wish he would just you know, trust in God more. It's like, well, I am. He made a way for me to yes. help mm -hmm. people. So. Yes. In the same breath, she was, yeah, she was saying, I hope he trusts in God over the gun. Yeah. But then in the same breath, she was upset with me because I didn't take the vaccine. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at a conflict there. Not bad. I think the U.S. is the is the longest standing form of government on the planet. So something about democracy works. Well, the Bible is saying a man doesn't work. A man doesn't eat. That's right. 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 That's they can't even survive now because of everything that's going on. It's a shame. Yeah. So guess what? They can't eat. They can't take care of the children. I believe that, you know what? We are blind to the things that have to come. We haven't seen stealing like they seem stealing. Let me tell you, prepare yourself. Yes, get your weapons if you can. I'm going to say Yes, amen. Get your weapons if you can. These yes. folks will come up in your house. They're going to try to take yep. your homes, everything. Yep. It's going to get back. And God wants us to protect that out there. Yeah, believe that. God's going to come down from heaven and yep. he's going to stand before that bullet. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, we we, 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 we just <laughs> installed a little alarm system yeah. in our house. I've never had an alarm yeah. system at any place I've ever you, lived in my life. It's getting, yeah. getting, you know, it's getting bad. We haven't seen nothing right. yet. We haven't seen it. Like uh, Josh has been dealing with, I guess, and yeah. that's because, I mean, they're using his social, somebody sold uh, illegal immigrants mm -hmm. his social security number so they can try and use it. Uh, it took us 10 hours to get our phone, uh, get for him to get a new phone because multiple people were using his social security yeah. card, his social security number just to try and get a phone. At Verizon alone. Yeah. Verizon. Oh, just at Verizon? Just at Verizon. Wow. Said, wow. Four different people used your social security number to apply for a phone. Uh, Crazy. Yeah, those, those people that come into the, the country illegally, they have to have they have to buy uh, other people's social security numbers so they can try and make a living out of it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Let's look at some more historical documents. Uh, a guy by the name of Athenagoras, I guess I'm pronouncing that right, I don't know. Uh, he was an Athenian. Go figure, looking at his name. <laughs> he wrote something called Concerning the Angels and Giants. And in chapter 24, see, I even put 24 in parentheses for those that can't read Roman numerals. <laughs> Right? Pretty good. Pretty pretty thoughtful, I thought. You should have just put 24. I should have. <laughs> but here's, here's what he wrote about these angels. Next slide, right? So they fell into the impure love of virgins. Remember chapter 6 of Genesis, right? And were subjugated by the flesh. They gave in to their flesh. How many pastor has said that ad nauseum? Right? And he be, and became negligent and wicked in the management of these things entrusted to him. Of these lovers of virgins, therefore, were begotten those who are called giants. That backs up Genesis 6, right there, right? Yeah. And if something has been said by the poets, too, about the giants, be not surprised at this. Worldly wisdom and divine differ as much from each other as truth and plausibility. Right. The one is of heaven and the other is of earth. Yeah. Amen? Amen? This is someone, you got nothing to do with the Bible, but lived back in these times and did some research, right? And wrote this. It almost mirrors Genesis 6. Mm -hmm. Almost mirrors it. So these angels fell in love with mortal females. They couldn't or wouldn't control their lust for flesh. And they mismanaged God's directive on watching over humanity. They're fallen angels. Before they were fallen, what did God ask? What were they tasked to do by God? Same thing as the angels are tasked right now, right? Watch over humanity. But they didn't even do that. Next. Sexual union of angels and women produced the biblical giants. Uh, uh, let me hang on. Sling, stone, Goliath. Pretty good sized dude, right? He was an offspring of a giant, of an offspring of an offspring of an offspring of a giant. And he was pretty good size, right? That's a biblical giant. Poets wrote about these giants and called them demigods. Not real gods, kind of in between. 
And their stories are what we call today mythology. You know, Zeus, Apollo, Athena, right? Right? Icarus, the one that made wings of wax and flew too close to the sun. Wings melted, splat. Right? Next. Deuteronomy 32.17. They, meaning the Israelites, offered sacrifices to demons which are not God. To gods they had not known before, to new gods only recently arrived, to gods their ancestors had never feared. Yeah. Who are these gods? Well, they're the giant. Think about this. You're a farmer out in the field, yeah. and you're, I don't know, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, whatever, and a 14-plus foot man walks up to you. <laughs> you're either going to run like the wind, or are you going to fall on your knees and do what? Beg for mercy? Don't kill me. I'll do whatever you say. Right? And what do they say? Worship me. Okay. As long as I'm going to stay alive. <clears throat> Think about 14. I don't know. What, what's his ceiling? 12? 13? 14? 15? Roughly 14? 15? Head would almost scrape the ceiling. Probably shoulders, you couldn't even put your hands, you know, one hand to the other. What would you do? Pray, cry, curl up in a ball? I, I don't know. So what did they do? They worshiped them. Because to them, they were like, they were godlike. Right? Next. The mythology central theme is that the gods, which are fallen angels, had sex with women and produced demigods, which is the biblical giants. Hebrew word for giants is Nephilim. Okay, that's the central theme of myth mythology. Next. <clears throat> so, Athenagoras, he also wrote uh, another paper called The Poets and Philosophers Have Denied a Divine Providence. And in chapter 25, this is what he writes. Next. <laughs> These angels then who have fallen from heaven and all the air and the earth are no longer able to rise to heavenly things. Remember, they got kicked out of heaven. Right? And the souls of the giants, which are the demons who wander about the world, perform actions similar, the one, in other words, the demons, to the natures they have received, and then the other, which is the angels that aren't fallen to the appetites they have indulged. Okay? Are you with me? All right, go to the next one. Meaning the angels that fell from heaven, the book of Enoch refers to them as the watchers. Just FYI. And it kind of makes sense when you, oh, yeah, they're big. Okay, they're watching. Okay, next. And they have become the supernatural entities found on earth, including ghosts, specters, and other entities. I saw a ghost. Did you really? Did you really? Yeah, I did. Well, you know what? Now you can tell me. You know what that is? Here, open it up to Genesis 6 and say, here's where, here's where it came from. The science is so infantile that it's just now going, you know what? The Bible's kind of right on a few things that, that we didn't think it was right on. We're just now catching up to a book that was written, that, I mean, it was written 2,000 years ago or so or more, and we're just now catching up with it. We're so infantile. We're children, right, Josh? The way I see science is just us trying to understand understand the world around us. Okay, we yeah. Understand how God created things, but people think, you know, they, they're know-it-alls, but really we're just infants sticking things in our mouths trying to explore the world around us. Yeah, like, ooh, that didn't taste good. Let's try something else. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much our level of science. Like, that's what science is at, right? And, and that's a good analogy because what does a baby do? They put everything in their mouth, don't they? Trying to get a, a sense for their world around them. Yeah. Well, like a doctor practices medicine. They practice it. They don't. They don't know everything. Yeah, a lawyer practices law. You know, I want to say, well, when you're done practicing and you want to do it for real, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> but though they practice, they, you're right. They do practice medicine because there's stuff changing all the time. I mean, who would have thought? That to put these little tiny metal sleeves in three of my arteries on my heart, they could go in my wrist instead of cracking it wide open. You know, if, if 
it boggles your imagination what they can do now. And it's only getting better. Yeah, they're going that way too. I mean, it's it just what they can do now is so less invasive, if you will, than it used to be. But again, we're, we're, just, we're just catching up to the Bible, you know? We're just like, oh, wow, yeah, that's in the Bible. Yeah, that's in the Bible. Yeah, that's in the Bible. All the, all the, all the jewels and stuff that are described on the ephod that, that the priests wore, those jewels have been around for so long, and sometimes we're going, hey, we found a new jewel. Oh, no, we didn't. That's the story. Okay, that's in the Bible. It's already it's been there this whole time. Go ahead, Rick. Next one. All right. So these demons are confined to this earth, and the souls of the giants do as their angelic fathers do. So the souls of the giants, the giants were the ones that um, were produced as offspring, right, from the fallen angels and the women. They do as their angelic fathers do. Their fathers were angels, albeit fallen ones. They've inherited their evil traits. They, these are the ones that were drowned in Noah's flood, and they're the ones who were killed in the Old Testament conflicts, i.e., David versus who? Goliath. Right? But if they were all killed in the flood, how did they continue beyond the flood? Their bodies were killed in the flood. Yeah, their spirits are still. Okay, so their spirits went into others. Well, and not only well, let me let me take it one step further. After the flood, what did Noah tell? What, what did God tell Noah and his family to do? Re replenish. replenish the earth, right? Well, these fallen angels that watched their offspring die, they were still around. So guess what they did? The same thing they did before the flood. Okay, they took wives, had babies, and the giants were around. Next. All right, again, we see that the souls of the giants, why Enoch called evil or unclean spirits, became known as demons as well. A lot of different descriptions that mean the same thing. Devils, demons, right? Evil or unclean spirits. Next. That makes the word demons a generic term used to indicate a supernatural entity working against the kingdom of God. What did Jesus say? If you're not for me, you're against me, right? So anything working against the kingdom of God in the spiritual realm is a demon, devil, unclean spirit, whatever you want to call it. It means all the same thing. It could be a fallen angel or it could be the offspring of a fallen angel. Y'all with me? Y'all quiet, next. It's getting deep, I know. Here, another church father, a guy by the name of Clement, very popular in historical writings. This is what he said. And how we say that the powers of the devil and the unclean spirits so into the sinner's soul requires no more words from me. On inducing as a witness the apostolic Barnabas, and he was one of the 70 and a fellow worker of Paul who speaks in these words. So this is what Barnabas said. Remember Barnabas and Paul? Paul and Barnabas? This is what Barnabas said. Next. Before we believed in God, the dwelling place of our hearts was unstable, truly a temple built with hands, for it was what? It was full of idolatry. It was, right? It was a house of demons through doing what was opposed to God. What did I say about anything opposing the kingdom of God? Before we were saved, we did things that, that were opposed to God. Right? Okay, next. All right, real quickly, let's glean, glean some more stuff from the early church fathers. Next. But they're too tired to glean from us, glean from them this week. So come back next week, find out what else they have to tell us, okay? <laughs> Any questions, Faye? It was in, yeah, um, if it was a woman, yeah, it's a woman that went away, yes. It had to be it had to be it had to be either either one of his wife or one of his one of his sisters in law. Yeah. I mean when you when you got eight people, God says replenish the entire earth. Eeny meeny miny moe. Okay, you're next, you know. <laughs> 
Good question. Anything else? Okay. So it's gonna be big and no, just kidding. <laughs> Is there a difference between a demon and an evil spirit? Are they on the same playing field? Do they have the same authority? Is one more powerful than the other? Um it's not lengthy, but we'll get to it. Uh, but we basically we call demon devil and unclean spirit basically are the same name for the same thing. So like if you read if you only do the King James version, it only uses the word devils, right? Other translations use demons. Other translations use unclean or evil spirits. It means the same thing. But as far as a hierarchy, we'll get there. The thing is, is you know, when Daniel was in the den, right? Yeah. He cried out, and an angel, which I'm not sure which one or anything, but an angel went, because he wound up telling him, you know, I came today, did you fall? But then Satan released a bigger angel, right, demon, whatever. And so he had to call for, I'm, I'm saying Michael, mm -hmm. the war angel. Mm -hmm. And I dare say Michael had to come help this angel that was going to go save him from the lions. Okay. And so there has to be something to that because, I mean, if an angel from God is going to come save me from these lions, and the devil decides, well, you know what? I want to take him out, so I'll just send a bigger angel. And then God winds up saying, no, I want her out. So he has to send another angel. That tells me there has to be some kind of difference there. Well, well, well I'm going to answer your question, but I'm not going to answer at the same time, because I, I don't want to get too far ahead. But the devil duplicates everything God does. Amen? Amen? Okay, so if there's different, totally your assumption, I'm not saying one way or the other, if God has different levels and the devil duplicates everything God does, I'll leave it right there. Let you jump to your own conclusion. Middle and Do you think that there, now this is just understanding. God knows everything. Oh, yeah. If the Lord told an angel, truly, do they not take orders from God? Sure. Right. So, if the Lord tells an angel, I want you to go straight for us, God knew that the devil was going to bring up a big army. It's almost a chance step, you know? Yeah. Because God, the devil, not have to know. You will not be able to overcome the devil. Angel that he's gonna send. I have to send Michael to help me. Okay. Well, I would have had to know that, right? Okay. Because he knows how to do it. Right. Why did he just send Michael and just that be the other? Well, Pastor's about to squirm out of his chair, and I think he wants to chime in on this. I don't want to ruin anything because that's going on. But there's principalities and power. There are degrees of levels, just like there's private sharpness and mm -hmm. the Right. But we need to know that when we're praying, things don't happen. We 
you to realize there's something happening in there. Don't give up. And there's warfare going on up there in the mm -hmm. spiritual realm so that those things can be manifested. Yep. It's going to get gooder. Uh, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Oh, God, I'm thinking. God is not stupid now. He would have known this angel, bless his heart, was not going to get the job done because he didn't even know. So the whole time I didn't see this girl, I, I, my head goes there. I'll, I just want to know details. And so, yes, that would help me. Because in the natural, I'm thinking, I would have bothered to have sent the lesson around. I right. Michael to begin with. But what happens in the natural is not the same that happens in the supernatural. So when we give up praying and believing God, it's kind of like your blessing is just going to mm -hmm. just come. You keep believing it, and that's what brings it out of the supernatural. Your faith is what brings it out of the supernatural. So I, I need to have God release his warring angels to protect me because I think Tess is about ready to suddenly <laughs> lay hands upon me. It's true. It's really. <laughs> okay, y'all think this call me stupid or whatever, because I just have one question. Okay, so Noah was told to go out and replenish the earth, all right? Okay. All the giants were killed in the flood. Yes. So how are they laying with the wives, the women again? They aren't. The fallen angels are. How are the, all the fallen angels? <laughs> <laughs> fallen <laughs> angels produce the giants. Right, I got with, that. With human females. So the falling angels were killed in the... No, no. Because they're angelic beings, not they don't have bodies like God. Okay, okay, got it. So how are demons mating with human yeah. beings? Yeah, so yeah me too. <laughs> me too, the, the, girl. Okay, okay, I'll give you an example. Abraham got visited by, by three angels, let's say, right? Were they angelic beings or were they in human form? They were in human form, right? So suffice to say, could a fallen angel not appear to a female, a woman, a human female, in human form, come together with her, produce a baby, right? The baby ends up being 14 feet tall or whatever, a giant, right? I keep going. Because the angels are huge. And then that giant was what who perished, one of the ones that perished in the flood, in Noah's flood. But the fallen angels did. Remember, this they watched their offspring die. So then Noah and the other seven people survived the flood. They start replenishing the earth, and as the population starts growing, the fallen angels find them, themselves another female, and the process starts over again. That's where we get like Goliath and stuff like that. Okay? Okay. He says that when Satan was kicked out of heaven, one third of the angels were with him. Those are the fallen angels. Yes, the mm -hmm. fallen angels. Yep. What they call demons? No, fallen angels. Fallen angels. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Yeah, sorry. Now, something that, that, <laughs> something that hit me the other day, one third of the angels went with the devil, right? Mm -hmm. That means you still have two thirds fighting for you. Yes. Two thirds is bigger than one third if you remember your basic math. Right? So we still have a greater army than he does. We don't have any that one either. Doesn't matter. Two thirds is more than one right. third. Yeah. Oh, you mean as far as numbers go? Yeah, we no, we don't. Yeah. If it was important, the Bible would tell us. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's just important that it was a percentage yes. or a fraction. It's really interesting. This is really half your fault. It's interesting, so everybody can enjoy it. So I, I saw this movie, and I, I don't know this is a dumb movie, so I still may be wrong. You, you talked about the three angels who came to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Did was one of them God? Jesus, yes. Because at that time, they were being told about Jesus, right? Right, but the Bible describes him as an angel of the Lord, capital A. Anytime you see capital A when it says angel of the Lord, that's Jesus in the Old Testament. Yeah. In the movie, it's, it, they make him God. Jesus is God. Well, I mean Jesus, but I mean he didn't come as the son of God. 
God. Right. He came as God. He came as one third of the Trinity. He came, they had him as Jehovah. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, Moses met Jehovah. Yeah. Not Jesus. Right. 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 So there is a difference. <laughs> Moses met God spirit in spirit form. Abraham met God in human form. <clears throat> also known as Jesus. Because he couldn't look upon him and live for him that was. Exactly. And then Jesus had two buddies with him, two angels. And he knew they were in male form because the people in Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to have a relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the thing is, there's a part in the Bible where he You don't have to bear with me with this thing I had been through. I, my memory is not good, but you know, it was talking about God said we came to see for ourselves. Yeah, for the Tower of Babel. And I was thinking, no, see, God wouldn't have to come and do anything. He sees and knows everything anyway. Right, but, but we came. Who, who was we? God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. We came to see what they're we are going to confuse their languages so they can't finish this. When, when, because, because when men, he basically says, when men get together and put their mind to something, there's nothing they can't accomplish. Hello, church world out there. Did you hear that? Come on. <laughs> put your minds together. There's nothing we can't accomplish. Chapter C, church. Yeah. Somebody blaming me and somebody want to lay hands on me. Stop. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, oh, yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, so are you going to do that sometime? Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, no, get stoned. Well, we're going to search everybody when he does that study. There will be no cars, no feathers, no stones brought in here, no tomatoes, no fruit.